Hey, Neil McDonald here. Welcome to uh, OJT with Neil. I think every time I do a video like this, I'm going to keep changing the title a little bit. Um, but the purpose of this video is to sit there and let you watch what I do when I do my job for some of my customers. Uh, in fact, today I need to be researching Tobihana Army Depot. I'm trying to prepare for a first call into there. Um, so we need to do a little research, to understand more about what the organization does or this buying command does and specifically identify areas that we want to dig into further, ask questions, um, get follow on meetings. So if we want to meet with subordinate offices, um, I want to know as much as possible going in there, um, what questions I want to ask. I also want to be able to know whether they, they've got their events listed, forecast listed, things like that, that um, if they don't have it, I want to ask them a question. If they have it, I want to make sure we're not asking the question. So I'm doing this on behalf of my customer but for you, I want you to just be able to see what I do. I always say in these um, particular activities when I'm researching or call planning, you know, preparing for a call that I'm gonna do or my customer's gonna do, I always say it's like a maze, right? You know the start um, and you know the end, but you don't really know the, the middle until you figure out the path through the maze to get you to the end. And you know, the, I think really the difference between uh, people who are experts or have the experience and people who don't is that we just know we'll get through it to the end, right? It might go down a path and realize we hit a block or a wall. We just turn around, come back to a known good, and then follow down um, a new path. And so you'll see me do that in our research. I'm gonna be using um, primarily the internet and Google, right? So I'm gonna be using uh, the internet as it relates to their websites, the Army websites, and Google for some random searches. Um, I haven't done much research on this one at all. Uh, I try to come to these, these videos with uh, no prep at all. So you can see what I'm doing. You can see me when I struggle a little bit to try to find the answer because it's what you're going to experience over and over again. And if you see somebody like me, who's got a ton of experience, I've got over 20 years experience in the federal side as a small business owner selling to civilian and defense agencies. When you see somebody like me struggling, you realize the struggle is just part of the process. And, you know, I, I think you hear me say this, if this is not your first video, government contracting is not a secret. It's just a process. Doing our homework is part of the process and, um, you know, no pain, no gain. In this case, uh, you know, struggling through the information gathering process is a little bit painful sometimes, but when you get to the end, uh, you'll see the results. And the other thing I really want you to remember is that when you're trying to go after a federal agency, if you're going after the right agency, not some little bitty agency, but, you know, a decent sized agency, then you should be seeing a million or 10 million or a hundred million dollars in potential revenue that could come to your company. Not the amount of money they're spending, but the amount of money. So if you said uh, you were going after the army like we're doing today, well, they can help you get to a $50 million company. It's up to you to figure out how to win it, but they have the potential spending pattern to be able to get you to that stage. And so doing this research and preparing for calls when you go into them is just, uh, you know, um, worth it in order to, earn that money, right? So let's get started. I'm going to share my screen. Um, again, remember it's Neil Ross. So um, as we go forward, uh, I haven't scripted anything. Sometimes I do scripted videos. It sounds a lot better. Here it really is just about moving forward. So I use a call plan sheet whenever I do first calls or I have my customers do first calls. Um, first call is basically a cold call. Even if it's a little bit warm, it's a cold call, meaning it's the first time they've really had a chance to hear about you. And it's the first time you've had a chance to ask them questions and dig into it. So um, in here, I have a call plan sheet. You can watch another video where I, I go through an hour webinar um, breaking down the call planning and how to do cold calls. Uh, they're very straightforward in the, in the government side. It's not like you're calling somebody and trying to sell them a vacuum cleaner. Cold calls in the government are incremental. So you do, you know, you just kind of keep moving forward. They're not really that hard at all. Um, but they're really easy when you prepare because then you have the confidence to go into the call. So I break up my call plan sheet here with um, basic contact information at the top. So I don't have to go look for it somewhere else. It's right there. And then if I take any notes or any of this other stuff, um, you know, if I'm the type of person who likes to print it out, I have it right there and I can just write notes and then pass it off to somebody and they'll know who I was talking to. Introduction talking points, that second box. Um, that one's my way of, of not wasting time doing chit chat around the weather or um, golf or your kids or something. It's like, you know, uh, I barely have time to talk about my own kids. <laughs> if I do, I want to talk about them with my wife or my friends or something. I don't need to talk to them with basically a random stranger, right? But there are ways to break the ice that are similar. So I try to find something that'll help me break the ice. It's 
Uh, always really good if I can find somebody had done a video recently or they spoke at an event recently, because then I can say, hey, I looked at that event or I attended that event or I watched the, um, the material afterwards. And, you know, and I can ask a couple of questions. It's still related to the overall purpose of the call, which is to get to know them and start talking about um, business. But it's breaking the ice and we're not digging right into the uh, meat of the meeting. Okay, so that's the introduction talking points. Um, you may or may not see me pull up a couple of them as we go through. The purpose of the call is I write it down so I can state it clearly to the person on the other side before I even start the, the bulk of the call. I say, hey, John, the reason I'm calling is this and this and this. Hopefully that's okay with you. If it is, I'm going to get started with introducing the company in kind of our elevator pitch. And um, for them, and, and I know I just kind of said that really fast, but for them, it's great because they go, oh, I get it. The purpose of today's call is this, this, this. Have you ever been in a meeting where you sat around and you're like, what the heck are we all meeting for? <laughs> like, are, are we supposed to get something done? Are we just here to have somebody tell us something? Um, the purpose of this video is for me to let you see how I do my process when I do research. There you go, that's the purpose. So now you can decide whether you wanna stay in that meeting or this video longer, stay in the video. Um, but it's the same thing here. By stating the purpose, everybody who contributes to the meeting, in this case, the other, like the government buying person and us, we're all trying to drive towards the purpose of the call. And below that box is the fourth box, which is meeting objectives. Those I, I may or may not state to the customer or the person on the other side, but I certainly make sure the team understands that in order for us to have a successful call, that this was worth our time in both the research and the, in the actual dialogue, um, we need to get these objectives met. I need to know this information or I need to get into these, um, these next offices, I wanna get into the program office. You can't just have a call and have it go great. Oh, it's awesome, they loved us and we love them and they, they really liked our information. It's like, well, that's great. In fact, that's a great call, but it's not a successful call when you think about sales. Everything in sales should move you forward in the sales process. You don't have to close the deal, but you have to incrementally move towards the close. That's how sales works. And um, so if you don't have a meeting objective, then how do you know you've moved the meeting forward? So I write down what I really want to accomplish, or in this case, what I recommend my customers accomplish. Um, this sheet hasn't been prepared yet. I'm, I'm using a template from another one I uh, did in the same kind of command. Um, so that's the top boxes. That's, that's kind of setting the, the idea of the meeting, right? And then this research I'm doing in this video and, and on the websites helps me fill out those next two boxes. The last two boxes are the questions. So I have these questions I want to get answered. Um, and I like telling the customer, hey, I, I prepared for this call and I wrote down seven questions. By the end, I'm hoping to get those all answered. Um, that's part of the purpose of this call. And it helps the customer in their head understand I have seven questions. It lets them know I prepared. It tells them I did my homework, so they're um, very happy. I've seen this time and again with my customers where I've done participating with them on the calls. I've been a silent participant or something. And I hear the government buyer saying, oh, this is awesome. You guys clearly have done this research. And we, we reference this document. They're like, oh, that's perfect. Um, and it's good in a show of respect to the person you're talking to that you've done your homework and you've prepared for the call. But the other thing is now you can take that person on the government side to the next level. They're like, oh, I don't have to just tell this small business all the basic information I tell them. These guys, I can take them to the next level. And so more often than not, um, the calls that my customers do end up in a next meeting with somebody further down the buying cycle. And that's what you want. Um, and you do that by having these prep calls. Uh, I mean, excuse me, uh, prep questions. So you don't want to ask it like a detective would ask in an investigation, but you want to have the questions written so you can integrate them into the conversation as you have them. Um, I'm not telling you how to do that today in this video. I got whole, whole other training videos that are out there. You can find it for free on LinkedIn. Connect with me on LinkedIn, on YouTube. On, uh, on our website for the chamber, govconchamber.com. You can find them there. I put videos out, we put content out constantly because we want you to be able to um, succeed. And not many of you can, not all of you can afford to pay for people like me. So if I can offer up to you what we do, maybe you can do it on your own. Um, and then come back when you can afford us. All right, so let's get started. There's this top page, by the way, in my call plan. Um, I dump links and, and thoughts in here. And then later on, I'll go, make it look pretty in the, in the second page, which is the actual call plan. So let me um, pop over here. Before we get started, um, one of the things I'd like to encourage you to do is um, when you go anywhere, make sure you understand, when you're talking to any government 
command or agency or office, understand where they fit in the overall um, hierarchy of structure. So in this particular case, we're going to be talking to this uh, organization called Tobihana Army Depot. Who are they? Where do they come from, right? And so I just want to put it in perspective really quick for you that the Army structure, and I've got another video out there that lays out the Army structure and how they're organized and how you can see it. I've done it with uh, Navy and others. But in here, uh, Tobihana falls under this major command called the Army Material Command, right? It's one of the four major commands there. And if you come down here, you can see it, the Army Material Command. Um, you know, they're at Redstone. They provide, uh, you know, support, right? You can read it yourself. But um, so they're a major command. If I clicked on it, then I get this page. And under the, so I'm at the Army, and the Army has major commands. Um, and you come down here and you see the subordinate commands and the one we're looking at is CECOM. So I'm scrolling down and it's the communications and electronic command right here. So now I went from the army command to army material, I mean, from the army to the army material command to CECOM. CECOM's here. CECOM has, I think, six major, um, let's look at their major subordinate commands. So they have six down here and um, one of them is the Army Contracting Command. So really, I say they have five uh, because Army Contracting Command kind of falls under a whole nother um, uh, part of AMC. Okay, but anyways, so Toby Hahn is right here. It's one of the major subordinate commands of the Army Communication Electronic Command. And there's Toby Hanna. So just following it back, right? From the first tab you see over here, it's um, the Army. And then under the Army is the Army Material Command. Under the Army Material Command is a subordinate command called CECOM, or ma Major Command, I guess. Um, and I mean, <laughs> that's, the, that's the terms, right? They just kind of keep going down. They're all commands at some level. Um, but so Army Material Command has CECOM, CECOM has Tobihana. So now I'm there and that's where I'm at. And what you'll see in a second is that Tobihana, um, this is their fact sheet and most federal agencies, offices, et cetera, put out some sort of fact sheet that help you understand what they do. I'm gonna come back in a second to the top page, but I just wanna show you, we went through that structure of the commands, right? The command structure. And now in Tobihana, they have um, directorates. And so most of the CECOM subordinate commands then have directorates under them. And these directorates are, um, you know, let's call it the task areas or something. So you, you can begin to see this as I go through, but this is um, one of the first places I was trying to get to. It's like, okay, so they've got, um, six directorates, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven directorates under Toby Hanna. So that's an important thing for me to, uh, to mention with my, especially my customer, I'm trying to prep them. Um, so let me grab this sheet really quick first. And I'm just going to dump this over here. Um, directorates. And then I'm going to put down which ones I think are the ones that fit. So I think my customer does, um, network engineering operations, they do cybersecurity and software development. So they fit pretty tightly into this IT world. They do complementary or additional services that they have good current past performance, uh, but that, that's their core competency. So whenever I do my research, I'm looking for that. Um, I, I always try to help them on the stay with the core. Um, so one thing they definitely do is production management, but this production management is different than like on the IT side. This is a lot of what you see, if you look at what Toby Hanna does, is like here, missile equipments or avionics, um, tactical stuff. They do a lot of downrange stuff. Um, what do they call it? Field logistics out there. So um, from a directorate standpoint, I don't see them fitting into program management or production management, excuse me, or production engineering. That's, uh, it's different. I mean, it's, it's not um, the IT world that they play in at the moment. It's, and so as I come down, it's, I get this feeling, and I've already kind of read this document, I get the feeling it's the same thing. I'm looking at this and it's all like electrical and mechanical fabrication, making um, parts, et cetera, um, putting it all together. That one doesn't fit there. And, um, but field logistics support does. And then, cause field logistics works on worldwide network of uh, representatives and field software engineers. The, the interesting thing is what are those software engineers working on, right? Are they working on, uh, uh, you know, tactical equipment, are they working on, let's call it operational equipment for lack of a, for me lacking uh, the right terms, but basically computers, the desktops. Now, when we look into Toby Hanna a little further, and I'll show you in a second, I've done a little bit of research ahead. Um, they've 
uh, they do do a lot of what my customer does. I just got to figure out where it fits into a directorate. So field logistics support, I'm going to, um, I'm thinking that one's a fit so far. And then resource management, analysis, staff training, and organizational management services. So um, that's a little bit more back end, I would think. So I'm going to grab that one. And then installation services, that to me is more, um, when they talk about garrison, that's back in the military base. And, and when they go forward, it's something else, right? Fields into the field. Um, but a lot of this installation service, the way they're describing it, is more about supporting the garrison uh, footprint or the buildings, things like that, and, and not necessarily the IT. So what I'm going to tell my customers, it looks like field logistics support and resource management fit, but we want to talk to you, government, to get your thoughts on, on where we fit and how you guys procure our services. Um, that's one of my standing questions that are in there. Like we've done our research, but we're trying to figure out where do we fit in there. So um, I already forgot just by coming over here. So let me, let me write this down. Um, so field logistics support FLS and resource manage RM seem to be the directorates that fit. How does David see us fit? So I'm just putting some sort of question down there. Um, David is the person we're calling. He's a small business specialist out there, so it's a good start. Um, okay, so I was telling you up here, um, here's a couple of things on the top page I can look at a different way. So Toby Hanna's recognized for providing support on the C4S. Oh, so that's it's funny. <laughs> On different pages, they have different things. So here they say C5 ISR, which is the way it is now. And on their homepage, they say C4 ISR, I think. Um, no, they say C5. Okay, well, I was reading other stuff said C4. I must have got it wrong. Um, <clears throat> anyways, so, uh, okay, so that's C5 stuff. Corporate philosophy, dedicated workforce, electronic expertise. Um, so the depot is the joint provider of choice for all branches which is an interesting thing, right? So uh, what does that mean? Um, I, I, I might actually ask that question, right? What does this mean? Let me go home. I'm just gonna paste hopefully that section. Depot is the joint provider of choice. Um, so the reason I'm asking is because I did, like here's CECOM, right? And we had a meeting with, uh, not ISIC, with well, somebody else. I can't remember who it was. It might have been CECOM at the top level. But we asked, um, you know, they, they have a mission partner. So they're, who do they support out of their own command? And, and some of these folks, especially on AMC, they support mission partners all across the, uh, the Army. In this case, it's all across DOD. Excuse me. Okay, so uh, Toby Hanna, unparalleled capabilities include spectrum support. Overhaul, repair, this is a lot of the equipment. System integration, technology, insertion, that's where my customer wants to play. Okay, and then here it's, it talks about Toby Hanna's Army Depot's core competencies. And so that's an important one for us to just say, and so I'm gonna do this again. Um, seems like we're a fit for the following TYAD core competencies. This is important because it shows them that we've read their stuff, right? And, um, uh, you know, we've, we're talking to two different languages, right? We're talking about their directorates, we're talking about um, their core competencies, and they'll know by the time we get to the call, they'll know that we've prepared for it. So, um, readiness training is not them, depot maintenance forward now. Uh, maybe post-production, post-production. So I'm right here in this core competency section here. Um, post-production software support. So the, our question here is, um, can, you, can you help us expand more on this? That's, that's one of the questions I'm gonna be asking is, post, uh, what software are we supporting? Is it, is it tactical equipment, is it network equipment? And again, in a minute, you'll see some um, just desktop type equipment 
or ironically not desktop uh, uh, software. Okay, so system integration, I think is another one. System integration, again, what systems are you talking about? And, you know, from the base of it, that's all I need. That's that's good part to get the conversation started. So let's come back. I already have this guy, so I'm gonna get rid of it. And I'm gonna get rid of these other guys because I don't need them anymore. So now we're at Toby Hanna's site. When I come in here, I look at, uh, I look at this entire page, so I try to find stuff. And I'm gonna go pretty fast with you, but one of the first things I really liked seeing was that they had a, um, their priorities listed here. And here they're talking about where they're trying to go, um, engineering requirements of the future. Um, they're investing in the people, strategic communication. We believe in promoting the capabilities and compliments, accomplishments of Tobihana across and beyond the enterprise, which is funny because I've been looking for them. <laughs> so I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing it and you'll see it in the news when I get there. One thing though, I want to just point your eyes to is right here. It says Toby 2028. And unless uh, they're running for president or something in 2028, then to me, that's like, are you telling me there's a vision for 20, uh, 2028 for your army depot? And if there are, if there is, I want that document. So I'm going to come back here and just say, what is Toby 28? What is uh, Toby 2028? I think that's Toby, right? Toby Hanna. That's funny. I keep messing it up. Um, T Y A D. No, it's Toby. So I'm, I'm curious on what Toby uh, 2028 is. I don't see it yet and we'll figure it out um, as we go along. And if I don't, I'll ask the customer. So, okay. So the first thing I do is I come across the top nav, just looking in. Um, I really, I hit these things fast, but I just look in to see who these people are. So this guy, Colonel John McDonald, I haven't clicked on his bio, but I know that he is um, uh, relatively new. So he just came on board in 2019, 4,000 people. So I'm able to quickly see there's 4,000 people on, Toby Hanna, uh, you know, as it relates to there. And then uh, there you go. He's another airborne guy like me. Did his whole stuff. Uh, was in Special Forces. So this guy this is very experienced. Um, so here it's just talking about, okay. Um, so the rest of it is just, uh, and I'll, I love me bio, which is fine. <laughs> fine. Um, but mostly I was seeing, so 4,000 people and uh, out there, and he's been there a while. So this person is... And the deputies are the ones you always want to get to know because uh, Colonel McDonald, or was he General or Colonel? I can't remember his name. Uh, so Colonel McDonald, he is, uh, he's going to transition out two years, maybe a little longer or something, but uh, military, especially military commands rotate on a regular basis where the deputies stay in, they bring the continuity. Um, they need to update their bios from 4,300. But otherwise, this tells me a lot about what he's doing, um, but he oversees it. I don't know if he's the right person for my customer to meet, but he's definitely a person to follow. If he writes anything, if he's speaking anywhere, then you want to be tracking it. Um, so he's, it's just talking about he pro progressed. So I came down. Okay. So generally in bios, the first paragraphs where you just get what you're looking for. Um, but now I, I mean, I at least know these names. I don't really need to um, remember them, but you know, if I'm talking to uh, David and we're in the meeting and he says, he says, uh, Zardecki and me just kind of drops the name. I'm tracking. Here's their mission. So um, if I come in here, I can see what they have. Oh, that's funny. Okay, so this is where I saw C4. So um, I think I got a little confused there. But there's not a lot on their mission. Not, not a lot for me to read. And I already read it on the fact sheet. I don't care about the history. Here's the directorates. Um, the biggest thing for me to find the directorates is to be able to... Um, you know, I'm looking to be able to click on something and see something and I'm not seeing anything uh, at the moment. So that's fine. I mean, we can ask uh, David about that. If we wanted to do cold calls into these organizations, we could. And um, that's a little tougher cold call because you're, you're calling in and people are like, why are you calling me? Because I'm trying to do business with you. Um, but anyways, I can see the organizational structure. This though is replicated in the fact sheet. So I, I don't see anything else that I need to see. Um, so let me, uh, let me come to the next one. That was the directorates. Here's connecting. If you want to, <clears throat> if you connect, um, you know, I was hoping to see a lot more on here, but this is just saying, if you want to partner with us, shoot us an email. So there's not a lot there. I'm moving fast because you can pause and come back. Um, uh, and then the other one's contracting. We want to see what's in here. 
I've read this and I'm going to go through pretty fast. It's just generic. It's just saying, Hey, join all these things. And here's some of the stuff we do. And if you want to get paid, go to the P tax. How do you do business? Um, here's some industry days, et cetera. None of this stuff is on their site, which is unfortunate, you know, like here industry days, they're shoving us off to FBO, um, which is now in that new Sam and it's less interesting. Um, tenant activities. I clicked on it for a second, just who else is out there. And then I realized I wanted to just advise you, make sure you don't get caught up following this, this all the way down. If you're talking with, um, uh, David, like we're going to, don't let them slide us off into one of these other entities, because what we're trying to do is understand Toby Hanna and, and to decide whether we bid, no bid, are we pursuing it or putting energy into, um, uh, business development in there or, or seeing what opportunities are there, or is it too small? They have a spend of, of about 700 million a year, but how much of it is in my customer's, um, wheelhouse? So in the IT side, anyways, that's a quick research. I didn't find anything worth writing down. Um, here's some resources that I'm looking for. And I just pop in really quick. So this is always fun. I've got SharePoint customers and I'm able to, you know, point out they got SharePoint. So if I was talking to David in relation to the SharePoint customers I have, we could really dig into, Hey, can you put us in touch with who's in charge of that? Because SharePoint might be managed. It probably is managed by a higher command, but down at this level with 4,000 people, they have business needs that the, um, the folks who do SharePoint can do business process applications on SharePoint. So um, it's great that they have that. It tells me right away. All right, housing, blah, 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 retirees, visitors. Um, these things here I'm serving, they're all resources for employees more. Uh, public affairs and news. So let me come back to home because that's pretty much where we're starting. Um, I, there's, when I look at this, there's links on the home page, And so news I definitely want, resources I want, and contact. Um, the thing about the thing about uh the resources is it's right there so it might just be a replication of this link structure and so i'm going to come here and i'm going to look at it and it pretty much is everything on here is a resource for um onboarding personnel uh basically so it's not resource for us businesses which is fine um, and then contacts i looked here and again the contacts are mostly geared towards uh, people who are coming on board, but I can still look really quick and see, you know, what do we got and what's in here. Um, I don't really see anything of, uh, there's no like special cool stuff in here that it's like, oh my gosh, they're like system integration support. You know, I could call there, but I think they actually have the number on the other one that we were looking at. Okay. So let me come to news because this is one I saw and I thought was really helpful. Um, really just this month, uh, an article came out. So let's look at this one. Modernize Army Command Centers. Um, so they're tra tracking back home. And I saw a little bit bigger blurb on that, but basically accessing their data in the, in the uh, garrison or the rear um, without a desktop. So we'll come back to that. So here I'm just looking, delivers functional maintenance rodeo. Don't really um, care about that. Cooperative training enhances knowledge and benefits. There's a high tech training site. Um, so a lot of this sometimes is local news too. So I'm trying to go through it pretty fast. Workforce stands, stands to benefit. For, so this one here might be related to the first article I just did. Upgrades water supply tank, not related, but like for some of you, it might. Um, perimeter road will be used to test satellite transport. Okay, so not that. It's funny, I'll just take a pause for saying, I don't generally go to social media because I don't find as much for them on social media. Um, but I did go to their LinkedIn and they've got this one section where they highlight, once a week, I think they highlight an employee uh, out there. And that's kind of research you can dig into because I was like, oh, there's a couple of soldiers, soldiers. And then it's like, hey, here's a person in network engineering. <laughs> it's like, oh, let's go see what they're, they're saying. And you could watch that video, learn whatever they want to say about the organization, blah, blah, blah. And then you can go look at them on LinkedIn, see what they're putting out. Um, all of this is just research, right? It's just figuring out um, ways to learn more and, and do your homework. You don't, you don't have to spend a lot of time on the first call doing it, but that's why I'm not going into social media. If I was digging in further, I would want to have even a deeper understanding. Okay, uh, transition strategic plan to Toby 28. Remember I was saying, what is Toby 28? Uh, there, there's a link, hopefully it'll have the document. Um, let's just keep going, because that wasn't too far. Military benefits, expands project management initiative, uh, industry standards, 
I'm not sure what that is, but I'm going to look at it because my customer does some um, program management stuff, National Intern Day, Recruiter Success, Video Chat Technology, Transforms It, Workforce Recognition, Army Friendly, Simple. I know I'm just reading random words here, <laughs> but I'm just kind of clicking through. Um, I'm probably going to stop here because I probably got enough. But So this one's interesting. They're the first in the department to get ISO 45001 certification, whatever that is, which is, um, uh, it's the international, so transition from OSHA to this one. So, so it must be kind of related to the OSHA standards. Um, it's interesting. It's very useful if you're in construction or facility because it fits right into that kind of work. Um, okay. West Point Prime's training device boosts combat readiness. Um, Training devices fielded throughout the art. So that's a little bit outside the world because that's more tactical. Um, personnel cultivates this side of painful experience. Local business partner honors depot employee, largest ever annual event. Small businesses. Okay, let's take a look at that one. Largest ever event helps large and small businesses support. So we'll see what that is. Um, official map out plan for the action for a mission on the move. Okay, so that's, I mean, that's kind of cool. But actually, I'm going to go one more page because there's only five. So, um, urgent repair, staying ahead of modernization requirements. Cutting edge science technology, assured accountability. So this is cool just to be aware. And this is not that far back. This is within 12 months, um, this, this news. That must be what I'm looking at is 12 months um, history. Here, as a management tool transforms day-to-day -day operations, um, that's worthwhile looking for for my customer because that's in their world. So how do you manage your day-to-day -day activity? And I don't know what's in that news article, right? It might be nothing, but it gives me a chance to look in. Okay, so that's all I see there. Um, let me get rid of that one and start looking at some of these articles. So here, modernizes the Army Command Centers. Um, Depot employees support the installation and modernization of home station mission command centers across the world. Um, Okay, I see what's doing. So, oh, that's funny. I know this person. Um, hmm. uh, mini situation rooms. So this one's interesting, but it's not. Uh, uh, it's not really my customer, but I will just take the article just so they can see it. Um, Uh, because it's networking, basically, we don't know what it was saying there. It's networking um, across the world, multiple locations, like six locations. So you have this one war room, if you're familiar with that kind of term. Um, so this command center that links everybody together. Um, it's so funny. I remember when I was in the Army, I was doing paper and tape on walls. So times have changed. Um, okay, so here, workforce stands to benefit from the compact computing technology. Uh, that's several of my customers' worlds. So let's look at this. Um, 2,000 thin client devices to the depot workforce, right? So that's, a, uh, that's an interesting one. So a new pilot program is making it possible for employees to access online information without using a computer desktop or desktop computer. Um, so basically these thin clients, it's hilarious because Thing, this was 20 years ago, we were doing the same kind of thing, but information specialists are testing capabilities, um, virtual desktop infrastructure refers to the process of running a user desktop inside of a virtual machine that lives on a server in the data center. This is all standard stuff these days. Um, I'm not gonna go too far into this at the moment, but I'm coming back because this thing talks, like here it says Folk, who's Folk? Kathy Folk is the Chief of in Installation Services Directorate, Information Management Division at Toby Hanna. Right, I'm assuming it to be honest, and so um, I want to know everything about this thing. And then here's uh, according to information technology specialist John Nemeth. So I'll, I'll go look on him after this video. Um, who's he? How did he get quoted in the article? Right, um, and 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 are there other uh, articles out here? And here's Al Lyons down here, IT project manager. So in just one news article, I just found three individuals I can use to research more in there. And this is exactly the type of stuff my customer does. Um, so this one's huge. Let me just put that over here. And um, so that was a good win uh, because the idea is now to be able to say, hey, can you get us an introduction with Kathy Folk so we can introduce ourselves, talk to her, 
et cetera. Um, that'll be one of our stretch asks, if you will. Um, okay, so let me come back. The, uh, sorry, the reason I say stretch, by the way, is because sometimes these small business specialists and, and, and other gatekeepers get contacted by tons of us businesses out there, right? And so the, um, they don't, many of them don't want to play gatekeeper, but even me, I won't make introductions for my customers to the people I know unless I know they're prepared. Otherwise, it just embarrasses me. It wastes both parties' times. And um, so if, if you can prove that you're, you're ready, and when we talk with David and, and we get the feeling he thinks we're ready, we're going to ask for Kathy. If we get the feeling he thinks we have some things we have to do before he's comfortable, then we're going to take those away as action items, go do them, come back, and have a follow-up meeting and say, hey, we did what you told us to do. We're, we've moved forward in uh, understanding Toby Hanna a little bit more. Now we'd like a meeting with Kathy. Um, and it's the same, same thing any of us would do when we're doing introductions. Okay, so let's look at this. Um, Toby Hanna unveiled its new strategic plan, starting, charting the organization's course through 2028. You cannot ask for a better thing. I'm going to find that if it's not in here, and I'm going to put it out as a separate video on you, uh, LinkedIn so people can have it. But um, here it aligns their focuses. So sorry, I was for you, I was reading over here, by the way, because I always like whiteboards. Um, but let's look at this. So the, here, this is really important to me. Um, the, the depot's four strategic focus areas, right? I don't know if I saw that anywhere else. So I'm gonna put it here and I'm gonna highlight it in, in part of what my customer talks about to say, hey, we were looking at four strategic areas and we really wanna help in, we think we'd help solidly in C5 ISR readiness and strategic communications maybe or something, right? We need to learn more about those, but we are definitely asking for this plan if I can't find it. Um, so the, let's read this one a little bit more. The updated strategic initiative comes after the depot saw unparalleled success with its last plan, which makes sense, um, resulting in 500 new hires. The depot executed 48 million in modernization effort alone. Um, so that's pretty good. Mobilize, mobilize the robust network forward location. So um, by the way, when I see a, a $48 million modernization effort, and you look in there and you go, okay, can we have 5 million of it? Remember, uh, this isn't the army. This, you know, if, if you're a small business, $20 million is a really good revenue stream, right? When you start going above that, you're on a path to head to large, you know, slow or long, you're on your way to large. Um, but uh, when you pass 5 million and you get up towards, heading towards 20 million, you're in that world where you can play. Well, if you can expect or um, forecast three to 5 million out of this command, right? This, excuse me, not even, yeah, this command, right? This is one of five commands within CCOM and CCOM is one of six or something within AMC or 10 within AMC. So you could see looking across the army alone, you could build a 20 to $50 million customer if you get to know them and you begin to just focus on your core competency and not try to do everything, but become known in the army as the expert at what you do. Anyways, I slide away a little bit, but uh, here the 28 roadmap helps to achieve the goal of being the best value for the warfighter. Um, so, uh, this is interesting, a member of the command. So this guy here, where'd he go? Nathan Thomas, uh, I'm going to go find afterwards, but Nathan Thomas is the overall lead for the 2028 initiative, right? Uh, which is awesome. It aligns, and this is great too. It long, aligns with the army's long range strategic plan. So for my customer, I'm going to make sure they have both this strategic plan and the army's long range strategic plan, which they have. Um, and they understand how they fit together. It's really important that you talk about the Army's priorities and, and CECOM's priorities and Toby Hanna's priorities um, as it moves forward because then people get that you understand them, you understand their challenges, and you understand uh, the mission and the direction they're trying to go. Okay, so each individual line of effort now has a team called the sub-integrated uh, pro product team. Um, blah, blah, blah. Adding the teams have a great impact. More employees get involved and help. So it said Christian, the, okay, the public affairs officer, and Paul Hoban is communication. So Paul Ho, so here, again, here's an article. It's just some news article, and it's already dropping uh, two names solidly, Nathan and, and Paul. Um, Kristen's not needed for my customer. She's great for me, but not for my customer. But these two are in the mix, right? So talking to them is a good idea. Okay, so the foundation for this is uh, corporate philosophy, reboot. The training is extremely valuable, said Christian, uh, chief of the C5 directorates, air traffic control systems branch. So 
we're not interested in that branch because it's, it's not where they're at. But again, you see a name here, right? I mean, this is how you start getting in if you don't know people. Um, Gene is a division chief for the same directorate, recently found that he was being moved to lead the, the new organization. So I, I'm not going to break these all down with you, but I'm looking at this again like a gold mine. But what I do see is there's no, um, there's no link to that unless it's this. No, that's the JPEG. Hold on, let me make sure I lock this guy down. Like that and, um, okay, so I'm gonna try to get this thing and then maybe I'll wrap up the video with this kind of effort. So Toby 28, where'd they call it? Toby 28 strategic plan. Toby 2028 strategic plan. Let's start with that and see if we can get it. Um, any chance? Nope, there's the article. Oh, that's funny, it's the second one. So that's the article, not that guy. Um, this one, so this is a good place. Come on. It's, it's funny sometimes trying to find it. So this is what I like about what I do is if it's, if you're seeing that it's hard to find, right. Um, then I will find it. I'm positive. I will find it for my customer. And that's what I like best about what I do is I dig, I find that stuff. And instead of just keeping it from my customer and me, it's like, I'll put it out there. I, you know, my customer is going to beat you or their competition because they're good and they're the best price and blah, blah, blah. Um, but it's not information. We all need to share information because it's so hard to find. But if I can put this out there and more people can benefit, that would be awesome. So here it's just, um, they're talking about the plan. Um, I wish they had the last names on this so that I could put it together with people's faces. But I'm looking here, I was hoping I could come in here and see it and I don't see it. So anyways, I'll come back and find that. But uh, okay, so that's that plan. Here's um, this one here. Err. So these are just getting, this one I was looking at, you see the direction I'm going, but here's the production management directorate. Um, I can see this guy, Rob Fried. So as I come in here, I can see who people are and I can begin to see how the directorates are organized out also. Some of this stuff is like I was saying, it's electronics engineer. This is not in the world my customer plays in, but, um, Okay, so that one's, uh, uh, that one's still helpful for other people, but it's less helpful for me. Actually, here's a great one, right? Keith Hoffman is the Deputy Director of Production Management uh, Directorate. So I would take that, reach out to that person, get his name, number, reach out to them, and try to do a 15-minute introduction call and, and go, we're trying to see if there's a fit for us in your organization. Here's what we do. We've done a lot of research on what you do, <clears throat> but we're still trying to figure out if there's a way we can help because we are more supporting services rather than your, you know, your direct uh, thing. If, if, if I try to um, make sense of it, these guys are using computers to build things. Well, we don't build the things that you build, but we manage the computers. How are you getting that support? Can we talk to you about that? Uh, but reaching, getting a name like Keith, Keith Hoffman, Keith Hoffman, I wasn't able to find that on any of the leadership or organization. So it's just sitting in an article. Take the time to read the articles and, and that'll be really helpful. Largest ever event. Okay, this was the small business one. Nearly 300 participants, wow. Um, so, uh, okay, so I said Nathan and he's a colonel. Oh, no, no, we, oh, that's funny. This is an old article. Okay, where, where's the date on this sucker? No, May 20, oh, so this is May 2019 and the new commander came in in June. Um, okay, so what is this event though? I wanna find out and is there stuff I can get to it? Um, uh, so there's a lot of people coming in said Mark Blasco chief of the production management's directorate for sustainment planning division. So there's under each directorate, there's divisions now. Um, so that's a question I want to ask uh, David is can we get a uh, org chart of the divisions under each directorate directorate? Um, you know, we'll talk about that. It's like, uh, I'll figure out how to integrate that in. But, you know, here's another one. Joe is the chief of the C5 
C4 ISR director at C3 division, which I'm assuming that's the C5 director. Um, so some good stuff. I, I'm going to scrub through this after I hang up with you, but I'm able to see a lot of people's names. Um, so network cross-functional team. Oh, that's from Aberdeen Proving Ground. Don't need that one. So these are other people who came in, which is fine, but they're not the ones I'm looking for as it relates to Toby Hanna. Um, <laughs> so, so I like this. If there's any gaps, the people in this room can fill it. Yes, Joe, and we want to talk to you about that. Um, so this is a great little article. It just kind of helps you. It also helps us understand, hey, when's that next uh, uh, industry day? Is it on the books? And, and that's a standard set of questions we ask as well. When's the next event's coming up? Um, we'll go look at uh, SAM.gov or the new FBO kind of thing and check that. Here's January 29. Um, renewed interest in the untapped potential of management tools. Uh, oh, this, I forgot why I even clicked on this. It's because it's a new management tool. Uh, our success is based on effective sales and operations for pre-planning for what they do. Well, again, this one's got a lot of people's names in it, which is handy, but, and, and ski. So this looks like a little bit more onboarding for me. So I'm, I'm not going to go into it right now because I don't need it for David's call, um, but we could do more later. Here, okay, I already looked at that. Here I looked at strategic plan. Okay, we're done. So I'm going to wrap up. I've done enough research to prepare for this first call I'm doing, and I'm hoping if you're following me along, you're seeing what I'm doing. I'm, I'm digging in, trying to find some of that high level, level information. Um, mostly I'm trying to figure out where can we fit and, and by asking that question, I want to let them know I've done the research initially and I think we fit here, but we want to talk to you about it. And we also want to make sure we're clarifying some of our basic facts, what I call situational questions before we move on to program office type people to talk to. Um, and then, uh, you know, we'll dig in deeper with questions for them. When we do prep for them, it's a lot more about asking questions about their challenges and the future direction or goals that they have set for themselves. So that strategic plan, is gonna be huge. Um, watch LinkedIn, make sure you join me on LinkedIn. I'll put it out there. At the very least, I'll put it out there because uh, it's my favorite place, but um, we'll do that. Okay, so government contracting is not a secret, it's just a process. Part of the process is following the maze until you get to the end, um, and it's not hard, just do it. If you have questions, uh, comment below, reach out to me on LinkedIn, um, connect to me how you can, and I would love to help you. I wanna see all of us succeed. Go make it happen.